Hello, everybody. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Hello. Hi. Doing good. I got a, a APL thing just pushed a couple of minutes ago. So it's perfect oh. timing. Let me see. So notebook one of the fast AI numerical linear algebra course, but APLified. Oh, it's not on the forum yet? Where do I find it? Uh, I just posted in the chat here. I, I literally pushed it like two minutes ago. So, so I haven't even wow. had a chance to post it on the forum. I just Amazing. got it done. But I will make a forum post after after the call. Really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, OK, so this is about the um, numerical, in, uh, well, computational linear algebra course, which we did, oh my God, five years ago? Well, three days short, <laughs> nearly five. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Um, yeah, I started going through it when you mentioned it just, just the other day, and it, it seems like a great course. I don't know why I didn't do it sooner, so. Oh, um, thanks. Fantastic. Well, we like to think so. I mean, it's not as like obviously immediately applicable kind of a thing, but you know, it's interesting. Um, uh, so okay, so you've so you've taken the first notebook from it, and and then some. it's like here we go. Ah, APL. Look at that. You got those two two ones, and then I calculate huh. the, the answer using our matrix multiplication. It's oh, nice. 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 I see. This is like a little just empty thing to fill in the space, I guess. Yeah, I'm not really sure how to make tables look look good in APL. That's kind of yeah. what I came up with. <laughs> but I uh, just concatenating stuff together, but there's one more section. Oh, a couple more sections here. So okay. I got to learn a bunch of new glyphs doing this. Cool. Nice using the power operator. I'm glad we did that. Very yeah. timely. And oh, a little bit more. And uh, oh, look I at this to, eigenvalues. My goodness. I didn't know how to calculate them in a smart way, but I got them calculated. And uh, hopefully, I'll learn a smarter way later in the course. All right. Great. <laughs> That's, uh, I think oh, that's the last my, of it. This is my favorite bloom filter joke. It's also the only <laughs> one I know, but it's a good one. Nice job, Isaac. That's cool. Oh, thank you. It's not going to get any easier. <laughs> well, I mean, in, in theory, this should be exactly what APL is good at, right? Yes, so. absolutely. I mean, and the bits where you have to start like opening JPEGs and stuff might get complicated, but. Uh... Oh yeah, I uh, I spent some time trying to figure out how to open images, and it, it's um don't have a super easy way of doing it, as far as I could tell. So I'll have to take another stab at that later. And then Molly's posted something. You can talk, Molly. You don't have to put stuff in the chat. We like hearing from people. Oh, no, the conversation was already going, so I was waiting for it to be over. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Tell us about this. But, what have you got here? Uh, yeah, so a few 
videos ago, uh, Euler's formula was talked about just a bit and oh, Euler's yeah, identity. Um, yeah, the Khan Academy one shows like the power series of the power, or, sorry, McClure, McCludian, I, I forget. <laughs> um, series, is that McClure, like a Taylor series? McClure. Oh yeah, I guess it must be like a Taylor series. Yeah, like a Taylor series. Um, it shows at first sine, cosine, and E, and then inserts I into the one, or the exponential. Uh, oh, cool. Yeah, that one. Inserts I into it and shows how it's a combination of the, si uh, the sine and cosine with an I in it. Um, Great. Yeah. Thanks for the tip. So, and then you can split, and then it shows how you can split them up into uh, the one for sine and cosine and how it ends up looking like, uh, yeah, you, uh, Euler's formula. Excellent. Thank you. Um, anything else that's come up? Uh, I was just going to say, Jeremy, I, I listened to some more of the Array podcast um, content that they um, oh, um, yesterday. The, the Arraycast? Or you the mean Array my cast, particular one? Right. Or just in no, general? No, I, I listened to yours too, which was great. But the, but the other the content that got there. It, what shocked me was that um, how deeply embedded APL is in Wall Street. Yes. That, that's amazing. I didn't realize that that was, was such a long legacy there with yes. trading. That was yes. really cool. Yeah, I mean, mainly nowadays it's um, K and KDB, um, which I think most of the big sense hedge fund trading folks use. Um, but that itself came from A, which Arthur Whitney built at Morgan Stanley. And um, I discovered the other day that it actually exists as an open source thing nowadays. Um, oh, not wow. exactly it's regularly maintained, but right? yeah, historical interest. Yeah, yeah there was, um, I can't remember who was the interview uh, talking about um, one of the reasons that the APL community is a bit cloistered, as you said last time, is that it, a lot of them didn't open source their implementations. Mm. It was really built around um, proprietary, applications and things mm. and so that that limited the the exposure which is really interesting compared to something like python it's kind yeah. of done the opposite yeah exactly and it's, it's also interesting how like proprietary trading shops like you know secrecy is so important to them um but also like they don't care about following cultural kind of trends and so they do tend to like pick things that are good regardless of whether they're popular so like Jane Street for example uses OCaml um, and yeah Morgan Stanley had A plus and lots of them use APL and yeah it is it is interesting I know a lot of them have been moving towards using more Python in recent years though which I think you know partly that might be because Python it's much better for working with accelerators. Um, this one with Aaron was like one of my favorite episodes, if you haven't seen it. And then um, this one with Brooke was interesting. It doesn't actually talk about APL that much, but just like an interesting I, uh, guy. Your, your oh, I'm not sharing my screen. screen. And I figured it out, you're doing this, so did you get us to talk? <laughs> Whatever works. Great. Um, oh, so that means that whole discussion about uh, um, where are we? There's what's in the chat? Yes, Isaac's thing. You didn't actually see it. No, no, we we, we saw that. If we you saw, saw that. that. Oh, when did I stop sharing the screen? I don't even remember pressing the stop sharing screen button. Huh. Okay. Fine. Um, yeah, okay, so this is K. Um, and this is A plus. And this is this, <clears throat> yeah, publicly available implementation. And uh, yeah, this is the one with Aaron, who 
built a GPU compiler in APL. Um, and yeah, this one with Brook I thought was cool. Um, which other ones were good? There was also one with Eric Iverson, which was good. Yeah, this one was good. It's a kind of a weird podcast because the first few episodes kind of like assume you don't know anything about array programming. It's just like, why would you be listening to an array programming podcast if you didn't know yeah, anything about array programming? They've kind of got a captive audience already. So it's yeah. <laughs> anyway, I felt glad yeah, about the point where they talked to Eric and talked yeah. about tacit programming was where it started getting interesting. I think. Yeah, I didn't know about it until until you mentioned you were going on. So thanks for, for telling us. All right. No worries. Uh, OK. Should we do some calculus then? Um, we'll keep going with some calculus. Um, yeah, so this is where we got to yesterday, right? We were doing um, rise over run, the slope. Um, so this is a uh, numerical approximation of a derivative. And it's an approximation because like, the smaller you get this, the closer you get to the slope at this exact point. But it's never, you know, quite short enough to be perfect. Um, so yeah, I thought it'd be nice if we could create something that would calculate uh, this for any function, um, which we can do. Um, and the way you do it is by creating a custom operator. Um, so we could create something called gradient. Um, um, and we could kind of copy and paste all this. And let's say we put X on the left, so that'll be our alpha. And our difference will be on the right, so that'll be our omega. Okay, so that's going to be a gradient of a particular function, right? So the gradient of f um, at um, at three or whatever at x, which is three. Oh, let's write it at three with a difference of 0 0.01. Um, oh, I've got to run everything. Didn't know I'd restarted my notebook. I'm surprised how long it takes to run, actually. Okay, it's happening slowly. Here it comes. There we go. Okay. Um, so that number is the same as that number. So the thing is, we want to replace f with, um, um, oh, and let's simplify this. We don't need these parentheses, right? Because plus happens first. There we go. Um, so in order to um, pass in a function, we can turn this into an operator. And so if you look at the help for an operator, like star diuresis. You've got up to five things around it. You've got the two arguments of the function it creates and one or two arguments of the functions that you pass to the operator. So there's five things. So if you want to create a custom operator, this thing's going to be omega. This thing's going to be alpha. 
And then there's two more things. This thing is going to be called omega omega, and this thing is going to be called alpha alpha. So if we replace f with double alpha, we've now created an operator. And so that means we now have to tell it what function to take the derivative of. Um, Oh, omega, omega, because so I'm going to put it on the right. Okay, what did I do wrong? I'm not aware of needing to put it in parentheses, but... Whoops, what did I do wrong? Um, Why do you still keep the F? Why, why is there an F here? Yeah. Because I've got to say, what, what am I taking the gradient of? So I'm taking the gradient of this function. Okay. So that's the thing that omega, omega is going to be replaced with. So this is kind of where I find the, uh, the quad operator really nice, because right in the function, you can add your print statements to, you know. Uh -huh. So like take um, that first that alpha that it's pointing at and yeah. assign that to the quad operator in the function and then it'll print out okay. whatever's there hopefully okay which is that should L. run before most everything else um okay so it should print that before it fails nope. that didn't work no. um all right let's try making something simpler we're going to create an operator which just calls the function. OK, so there's the world's dumbest operator. So we should be able to go g of plus, which would be plus. Apply that to 2. Huh. OK. Um, G plus. All right, so that did not work how I expected. Does it need to be alpha alpha? The other way around. So normally you do like plus slash. So it goes on the right. I don't think this is right. Nope. Oh, okay. Um, so maybe if we search for this. I haven't normally found this search very useful, but let's give it a try. Dops, yes. Dop. Ah, okay, so it does expect to have just alpha alpha if it's monadic. So that means, oh, it goes, I think, the opposite way around the way I expected. All right, so let's change this to alpha alpha. And that would mean I think it's plus g. Ah, OK. So I guess that makes sense. The other operators work that way, like plus slash. And... Oh, of course they do. No, so I hadn't oh, thought about Jeremy, that. Jeremy, you're an idiot. All right. Yes. Yeah, somehow I had it backwards in my head. OK, all that. Fine. By the way, um, Isaac, for your flashcards, it occurred to me that a lot of these things don't really make sense as flashcards. Um, and for those, like it occurred to me that something that might be useful is if you um, uh, 
added tags to the ones that you want to be exported as cards, then you could go through in your script and just add cards for those that have like a card tag on it or something like that. That would be a way to avoid having lots of crap you don't need. Yeah, I quickly learned the shortcut to suspend a card, <laughs> but that would probably be a better way to do it to not have it generated in the first place. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. Yeah, so it's a bit, I don't know, it's a bit weird in some ways, but I guess it kind of makes sense that this is how you create an operator. So this is a monadic operator because it only has alpha, alpha. It doesn't have omega, omega. And it's a monadic operator that creates a dyadic function because it's got an alpha and an omega. And so I don't think we actually need the parentheses anymore. No, we don't. Because um, operators bind more tightly. So it's as if this is parenthesized. Does that make sense? So a monadic operator takes stuff from the left. If you give it an alpha alpha, it would take stuff on the left. I mean, I assume we could go omega omega, although as Isaac said, that's not quite what you would expect given how other ones work. Let's see if it works. No, nope, you can't. Okay, so yeah, you, you, it goes on the left if you say alpha alpha. And if it's on the left and the right, then you would do, you would do both. Okay, so that's our um, custom derivative. And that's a, um, a numeric approximation of a derivative to be more precise. All right, so Ah, okay, we've got a whole list of our operators here. Wait, so left arrow is considered an operator. Has anybody figured out what the curly brackets means yet, by the way? I haven't. Um, I'll tell you an operator I'd quite like to do is this one, tilde diuresis. I think I can save a parenthesis in the one we just did. Correct. Uh, tilde, yeah. tilde diuresis. Okay, which is a monadic operator. So it's gonna take one function on its left and it produces a dyadic function. Hence, there's the one function on its left and that results in the dyadic function. Um, it's got a bit of a strange name, commute, um, but all it does is it takes X and Y and it returns a function that actually calls Y FX rather than, it, uh, rather than X FY. So um, if we do um, okay, what's the letter for that? Yeah. Shift T. And that's called tilde diuresis. Monadic, shift T, dyadic, shift T. Oh, there is no monadic. Okay. Um, so then there's commute. Um, and You could say, yeah, three minus two is that. So that would be 
um, putting um, x on the left and y on the right, so it's 3 minus 2. But if we do it the other way around, 2 minus 3, we could also write like this, 2 minus, sorry, 3 minus, um, what was the letter again, t? Yeah, and then commute means switch the order of the arguments. Does that make sense? So it just flips them around. Oh, just one moment, my daughter wants me. Sorry, you had a missing computer problem. So um, Marty found a, a link for um, brackets, the curly braces. Great, let's take a look. I thought they might be optional arguments, but it didn't make sense for results. So it can indicate shy results. And did you find out what a shy result is? No, I no. Don't know that <laughs> I've heard that word before. APL shy result. Shy. Uh, 
Ah, okay. By default, Sorry. functions print their result unless they're shy. There you go. Okay, so that's an optional argument and that's a shy result. <sighs> Great. How do you define a shy result in a function? No idea. Okay. Um, so this is a dyadic tilde diuresis. And so we can now redefine gradient like so. So because the right hand side is handled first, we can now say, and I find it's really helpful to like find a way to say this, which is I would say omega divided into the right hand side. Um, so I wouldn't say divide commute, I would say divided into like normally there's some way you can like express the idea of these things being backwards in a reasonable math or English expression. So that does make it a bit more clean, which is nice. And then there was another version of commute of total diuresis, which is constant. Um, and so constant just always returns its argument. So we could create a function called zero. Zero. Um, and so this, this is a function. And so we can apply it to anything we like. And I believe we can even do it dyadically. So that's just a function that returns zero. And that's it for tilde diuresis. Um, this form I see a lot. Um, people use it very frequently in APL. Jeremy, when are they using it? They use it for exactly this kind of purpose. Okay. APL is okay. hate parentheses and they hate unnecessary symbols, um, which I kind of get like it's, this is certainly, by having less stuff to read, it's, I find it easier to read. Um, you know, the other one I think we might want to do, um, is each. Which one of these is each? Does anybody remember? Is it this one? Yeah, this one. Okay, so this is just diuresis. Um, and here it is. One. Diaresis. Monadic. And it's a monadic operator. Oh, this word here means can be either monadic or dyadic. It's not ambivalent as in I don't care, but it's ambivalent as in either valence. where valence is handedness. Uh, 
Um, yes, this is okay. <coughs> this is a list of um, Oops. Okay, this is a list. This is an array of arrays. So it's an array with two elements. And if we try to do plus slash of that, um, it's going to get upset because it's trying to do, it's trying to insert plus between its arguments, which would be the same as typing one, two, three, four plus. Five, six, seven. Um, the uh, each operator takes the previous function, which in this case is itself being defined with an operator, and it means sum, and it applies it over each of its arguments. So plus slash each means apply plus slash to this, and then apply plus slash to this. thus giving us the results 10 and 18. Does that make sense? And I th yeah. think that might work for like, um, let's create an array, a matrix, uh, which is a two rows by three column array iota six. The rows gonna go between them. Uh, pro. Thank you. Okay. Um, so if I try to do two, three plus mat, something like that can work in NumPy. It would broadcast the, um, maybe like this, it would broadcast this over each row. But it doesn't, and it also, I think, can work in J, but I don't think by default it works in APL. But I think if we say that it applies to each element of MAT, uh, or does it apply to each column? Hmm. Something like that. I think the problem is that it's going through each of two. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, yeah. I think the problem is it's going through each of two, three, four separately. Um, what does this look like? Plus slash. Ah, okay. It, so it doesn't actually work that way correctly. On a on a matrix. So you know, I think this is this might be related to when we were looking at the iota before, where we were um, searching for um, using it to find values in the in the matrix. It was uh, you wouldn't find individual values; you'd find whole rows at a time. Yeah, I think the issue is it's not going over cells of an array, but going over items. So I'm guessing if we did kind of more like this. Um, 
then we might be able to do like Oh, not Matt, B. Okay, yeah, so that's going to go over each of these. It's going to go over, it's going to go two plus this, and then it'll go three plus this. And I assume there must be some way to make that apply over a rank two array, but I don't know what it is. So I guess if anybody fingers that out, let us know. Otherwise, I guess we'll probably come to it at some point. I put the syntax for defining a shy function in the chat. Um, oh, okay. And one of the structure flow, but. Oh, no, it's all good. A shy versus not shy. Let me copy them. I don't really have much of a flow, I've got to be honest. Uh, oh, that didn't work. Oh, it seems like you're on a roll to me. <laughs> uh, copy. Paste. That's more like it. Okay. So I'm going so to guess this one's one is... shy, is it? Yep. And this one's not shy. So when I you actually assign the just... it to the function, that makes it not print out. Thanks. Yep. Not sure when I would want things not to print out, but. Hmm. Okay, so none of their examples are using matrices. Um, the only other place that could be helpful to look at is to look at the APL wiki. only defined in nested APLs. I think that means things where you can have an array and an array. Okay, I don't know what any of that means. I wonder if we can search, I'm trying to search APL card. That would be nice if we can search with symbols. Hmm. So I assume there's going to be some uh, magic incantation that basically turns a matrix into an array of arrays of rows and that you would do it, do it that way, I assume. Okay. So you can search for a, an APL symbol on APL cart and it will give you uh -huh. everything that's in. Um, I don't okay. know how well, helpful most idea. of them are to me, but. I mean, now's not a bad idea to learn how to use this thing because when I was on the podcast, they seemed to think it was a thing worth learning about. Okay, here it is, H. Now, how do I, I see. So typing comma each ensures all immense vectors. Join items. I see. These are like idioms, I guess. Um, yeah. So um, like one that I found, I was when I was working on this computational algebra, you could type in like calculate the determinant and they've got a big long thing for that. Mm -hmm. um, and so some of them I think for most of them, um, the ones at the top seem to be more simpler than the ones down below. Okay. They are sorted. Um, and actually, this this table lives in a um, text file in a oh. GitHub repository. Here is Conway's Game uh, of Life. <laughs> That's great. I'm gonna be really happy when I can read all this. Yeah, this is <laughs> intense. 
That's cool. I only see one thing that mentions a matrix. Um, Can you try adding matrix to the here. search? Oh, I can oh, just search here. It's that works enough. too. Kepta diagonal matrices. And I believe there are, he does have additional um, tags and stuff that's not shown here to help with the searching. Um, but I don't know how good they are. Non diagonal matrix of shape of matrix. So if I copy this and saying at the top that what each thing is, M is a matrix and capital M is a numeric array. Oh, so this is saying it's a numeric array, which is a matrix, I guess. So I guess that means in theory, we could type mat here. We can. Okay. Um, um, this is Okay, this is the H which is flipped. Uh, okay, <laughs> I'm not going to try and do this just now. All right. Um, I see slash bar and slope bar a lot. I didn't know this is called slope. I always call it backslash. And I have no idea what they are. So maybe we should learn. It's uh, as an operator, it's a monadic operator. And we type it. Oh, with a slash. Makes sense. slash bar. And this is called replicate first. No, it's called reduce first. Reduce first. Oh, my daughter wants me again. Sorry. Hang on. All right. So if you do the sum plus slash and a matrix um, versus this one, one will sum column wise and one will sum row wise. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm glad we had a matrix ready to go then. Okay, and is that literally all it does? This is, okay. So in J, um, J has a rank operator, which is actually the double quote sign, where basically you can just always say what axis you want to use. So that would be reduce over, uh, over the zero axis, and that would be reduce over the one axis. Um, but I'm not sure if you can do anything quite the same 
Um, I think I... There is a thing called rank. Maybe we should see how this is different. Uh, so that's this one here, which is called Jot Diaries, I assume. Okay. Help. J. Shift J. Classic edition. It doesn't have the same, like, usual information. Anyway, it's called rank. Um, um, I already forgotten what letter I said, J. I guess this is called jot diuresis, but I didn't see a thing for it. On attic. Rank. And um, if I say do it over this axis, Well, that sure didn't work. <laughs> oh, uh, that might need this. Hey, look, it is the same. So, um, wait, no, that's the same as sum. And what if we put a zero? Two. No, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. All right, let's come back to that one and make sure we, okay, so it sounds like slash bar, there's not much to learn, which is it's just the same as slash, but it does it over a different axis, uh, which I assume is going to be the same for backslash bar. Um, Except they didn't call it backslash, they called it slope. And that's probably going to be backtick backslash, I'm guessing. Nope, it's not. All right. Didn't miss okay, anything. so we can we can specify the axis not. of plus slash. Yep. By adding like bracket one the right after the operator i believe and then bracket like that um no square brackets uh immediately after the operator so it's uh, uh yeah that's... just like that okay so I do, I does don't that think apply for like does that apply for like everything or is that just this particular i feel like i've seen that mentioned in the docs yeah, it's called a function access. Um, this like so to all um, operators. Like, can, you, can you put it on all functions or? I think it's all functions. So, um, okay, so why on earth do we need slash bar axis axis? So this is what I was looking at here. F must be a monadic primitive mixed function taken from these. Or a function, okay, no, it can't apply to many things. It's just slash or slope or these. I wonder why it's There's so a bunch of. Uh, 
And then you've also got axis with dyad at copper end. It must be a dyadic primitive scalar function. Oh, well, that's good. So any dyadic scalar function, primitive scalar function. Or a mixed function, which I assume means one with an operator where they've used one of these. OK, so it actually does sound like you can do a lot of things with it. That's good news. Yeah, there's a um, there's a wiki I put on the, in the chat about the function axis specifically. It kind of covers both. Um, it's like it's kind of a combination of these two. OK, cool. I see a few other people have um, mentioned them in the up. chat, by the way. Is there anything we wanted to um, talk about or ask about? If anybody wants to speak up. Function access. Uh, mine was was uh, not specifically related to the content we were discussing, so didn't want to bring it up. Oh, no, please do. <laughs> I mean, we're so like not at all focused, Molly, as, as you'll see. <laughs> This is just a like, yeah, hanging out, chatting about whatever seems interesting, and Euler's uh, formula is definitely interesting. So, um. Oh yeah, so I came for so I first came across Euler's formula in a uh, paper that I was reading on positional embeddings. Uh huh. Um, so I did, I had no idea what it was. Uh, uh -huh. I actually used this to figure out the fundamentals I was missing. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, it was root rotational positional embeddings is what it was called. Okay. Yeah. So for those of you who are interested in transformer models, there's like literally no sense of like the order of things in a vector. And so it's like literally impossible for it to learn anything that requires order and language is ordered. So we use these things called positional embeddings. Uh, is it this rotary position embeddings? A rotary positional embedding. Yeah. So it's been a while. <laughs> yes, no, that's it. And then there is a proof. It, it, yeah, this was the actual proof I was going through, trying oh. to figure out what they were talking about. All right. Um, yeah. And then I was missing a lot of the fundamentals. So I just go down to where they're doing the actual proof. And then you can just uh, click on the ver whatever you do not understand, like the proof for what you don't understand. So if you don't understand complex cosine, like how they are able to get the complex cosine function. And it's not and like infinite. You don't find yourself clicking until <laughs> you come back to where you started. <laughs> uh, somewhat that can happen. Um, but yeah. And then um, I just start looking up the uh, various things they're talking about here until I understand it. So okay, yeah, that's cool. So it's Pretty just helpful. one way I was able to understand papers, like the math behind papers and stuff. Mm. So thanks, that's great. All right, well, I reckon we might stop now and um, uh, probably talk about. Uh, Axis next time. Um, um, axis. Uh, something's going to be there. I'll just put a number. We can do that next time. That's going to be super handy. All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, see you next time. Bye. Thank you. See yeah. you. Have a good one. Bye. 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 Bye.